I like watching Netflix documentaries because they tell me stories I didn't know about and just giving basic information. Only Netflix never goes into the deeper reasons behind the story, like deep state issues, for which you might just as well say deep Swissy or deep Swempler, which is a combination of Swiss and Templar, the Swiss Templar or Swempler, which sort of carries the automatic phonetical similarity of the word swindler when being evoked by the word swampler. The word swampler simply transmits the feeling of Swiss Templar swindler altogether. Swampler and the swamplers. So here you see um, the president's house, here it says deep state deep swissy and here it says deep swampler it has sw from swiss and ampler from templar so let's call him swampler so when seeing a netflix documentary my brain synapses get activated seeing the deep swampler in the whole shebang thus adding to the quite shallow Netflix documentary, seeing the real connections behind the screens, and literally behind the screen, so to speak. So is the guy literally looking behind the screen, and it says Deep Swampler behind the screen. And so did it happen concerning a Netflix documentary which story became a real international scandal about which there was a lot of talk in the media and I'm going to tell you what really happened in that Netflix film Making a Murderer and who actually pulled the strings. The story talks about Stephen Avery and his cousin Brandon Dessay being locked away forever in US prisons where the system deliberately threw away the keys afterwards, making sure that these innocent American men will never come out anymore. Okay, so far nothing new in the US. So here it says, uh, Netflix, I think this is Stephen Avery, and here it says, Swampler Conspiracy in Swissconsin, which is the state where it happened, which I call Swissconsin. The video or documentary, Making a Murderer. While watching the Netflix documentary, it's projected the same funny Swiss atmosphere upon me when the Swissies or Swamplers put me away for five and a half years in several high security prisons for political prisoners because I wrote articles on the Swiss Nazi banks in international newspapers and because I made historical documentaries proving that Switzerland was founded by the Knights Templars in 1291 and who later became the Nazi Templars and all financed by the Swissies. So here you can see me surrounded by the Swissies and the Swamplers and here says the Swampler mob. And I have to use like words like swampler or swizzy, you know, to avoid the censorship of this free world. Here you can see the prosecutor of Swiss Consen called Ken Kratz, which is a Swiss German name. And here it says typical swampler behavior. 
and I experienced exactly the same kind of Swiss behavior by the Swiss mob as when I heard the U.S. state prosecutor Ken Kratz speaking with this sweet, innocent tone and smiling through his teeth while he was making things up in this Swampler conspiracy against Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey in order to lock him away forever. Thus lying all together in this typical organized way which I know all too well from my own experiences in the motherland of Wisconsin by the name of Switzerland with similar organized liars of the Swiss police, Swiss Justice Department, Swiss lawyers, Swiss psychiatrists, Swiss witnesses, and Swiss prison guards conspired against me while smiling through their teeth without a scratch on their conscience as if they were really believing having universal justice on their side, just because I damaged Switzerland's credibility internationally, for which, in their wicked state of conscience, I had to pay for, making them believe to follow a just cause. So this is me with my beer in my hand. Here's the mob from the motherland of all evil. And here it says the Swampler mob of Switzerland. And I saw the exact same thing going on in the Netflix documentary Making a Murderer. And the very same Swissy atmosphere being projected from out of the screen. In German and in Swiss German, the word Kratz, exactly as in the Swiss conscience, prosecutor's name, Ken Kratz, is being used in the saying, Es kratzt mich, meaning, I don't give a damn. And Kratz, in German and in Swiss German, means a scratch. So here it says in German, es kratz mich, which means exactly in English, I don't give a damn. Here it says, kan kratz, there he is. Just follow the money trail and you'll end up in Switzerland and the Swamplers. This here was probably what the prosecutor of Wisconsin was thinking by himself. He is Ken Kratz and he was, or Kratz, and he was probably thinking, it is not good for my career to pay $36 million by my department. And the state of Wisconsin didn't want to pay out the millions of dollars to Mr. Stephen Avery who had a lawsuit of $36 million in compens compensatory damages running against the state of Wisconsin, for which the crooks in the Wisconsin Justice Department and their prosecutor, Mr. Ken Kratz, didn't want to take any responsibility for and pay out. Just as the Swissies and their banks didn't want to pay out one billion dollars to the jaywalkers in 1995. You all remember the affair with the whole catch reparations lawyer Ed Fagan and Swiss security guard Christoph Meili in 1995. He came and visited me once 20 years later. Christoph Miley did, and we had dinner together. Nice guy, and he did a good job. It says, 
Christoph Meili versus Swiss Nazi banks, 1995. Here's Christoph. I met him when he was like 20 years older. Well, same story of paying back money. And then all the lying starts by the swamplers. When there is big money to be, to be paid out concerning their eternal and perpetuous crimes by the swamplers. So here it says, here you see the money trail going to Switzerland in the Alps. And here it says, things getting a bit hairy at payback time. As you already know, the name Kratz, as for prosecutor Ken Kratz, KK, well, there's just one K missing, eh? And the KKK is also Swiss. I've shown you this. So his name, Kratz, is a Swiss German name. And so are all the other 15 names of the perpetrators, whom you can all find in the Netflix documentary. And their names next to Kratz are Lautenschlager, Lehmann, Lenk, Vogel, Kuscher, Rohrer, Griesbach, Wiegert, Fassbinder, Hermann, Sturm, Halbach, and even more. All of these swamplers of Swiss descent working for the Swiss Consen Justice Department, Swiss Consen Police, and around this dirty affair collaborated in this conspiracy against the two innocent Americans, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. So, actually, this is part from a website where in Swiss Consen they say it themselves. They, they call that Little Switzerland in Swiss Consen. And here are the Swiss German names from the film. You know, yeah. Kratz, Lautenschlager, Lehmann, Lenk, Vogel, Kusche, Rohrer, Griesbach, Wigert, Fassbinder, Hermann, Sturm, Halbach, etc. Well, you might say, you know, the German speakers here might say, okay, well, we have these names also, or some of the names also in Germany. Well, let me tell you, this is where the dangerous thing starts. You know, and the Germans getting all the blames for everything. You know, people thinking, oh, this is German. Well, hell no. You know, they are swamplers. You know, they are Swissies. And the Germans, as usual, they get all the blame for it. Yeah. So this here, with all the Swiss flags and the sort of a Swiss Pope here, the Swiss guard probably, this here is America. And I call it Swiss Consen, in a town New Glarus. They write it here. They, they even write it themselves about America's little Switzerland. Okay? I'm not joking here, people. This is very serious and it's very dangerous. Because the swamplers, you know, they all stick together, you know. So here it says, I read a little bit for you here. Uh, New Glarus is located in the heart of green country in southern uh, Wisconsin. Its rolling hills dotted with small towns, farms and woodland pastures are much like the alpine farmlands of Glaru, Switzerland. When you arrive at the village entrance, you will quickly understand its popularity as a destination. Well, it wouldn't be my, my popularity. Eh? New Glarus is America's little Switzerland. And um, for over 175 years, the beautiful little community of New Glarus, Wisconsin, has been a magnet for Swiss settlers. Well, I'll let you read it yourself. You know. um, so I'm not joking here, people. This is very serious. And there are two innocent Americans paying for it. You know. So here's the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the uh, the website here. Oh, there it is. Little Switzerland people. 
and it gets worse. You'll be shocked what's coming next. Etymologically, the name of the US state Wisconsin is Swissconsin, where officially 1% are Swiss Americans, and probably even much more. So, officially, there are 61,134 Swiss Americans living in Swissconsin today. But in reality, there are probably even more. And they usually go for all the key positions. So, here's the website uh, Swiss Americans. You can read it yourself. Here, uh, regions with significant uh, pop uh, Swiss populations. And so I guess here, Swiss Consent somewhere. Uh, maybe we can see it. Oh, here it is Swiss Consent. And here, the population. So in Swiss constant are sixty one thousand hundred and thirty four Swissies, eh? Swiss Americans by numbers. And it's probably much much more. So here you can see Wisconsin, nine uh, percent, one um, percent, almost. So. Here are some more communities settled by Swiss immigrants. Well, Bern is the capital of Switzerland. Here you got Bern, Idaho, and here Kansas, in Bern, Indiana, Bernville, uh, Denver, of course, uh, Grut Grutli Lager, uh, the Grutli. That's um, where the uh, where Switzerland started off, you know, with these uh, with these three cantons in 1291, and here Helvetia, Hohenwald next to uh, Interlaken, Lucerne is a town and big town in Switzerland, Neuchâtel is a town, New Bern, New Glarus, remember that was called the Little Switzerland, another New Bern, uh, Steinauer. Vevey is a town in uh, in the in the uh, in the valley, valleys. And of course, Zurich, the financial capital of uh, of Switzerland, and probably also of uh, of Europe, together with Frankfurt. Some world famous Swiss consonites are the biggest U.S. traitor of all times, Aldrich. Ames and the serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gain, and Mary Brunner, where Dahmer and Brunner are also Swiss German names. Mary Brunner was one of the Charles Manson serial killers who were living at the Spahn Ranch in California of George Spahn which is also a Swiss-German name. Well, imagine Roman Polanski n now living in the G-town Stadt, Switzerland. Coincidence? And then there is also the Charles, Charles Guiteau, which is also a, a French-Swiss name, because they got a French-speaking part. Eh? Here you can see him. Um, and he was the assassin of the 20th president uh, of the United States in, in the 19th century. And this is probably where Swissy got the whole line of Swiss presidents all over the, um, over the US. You know, so they got their own man f as the next president, you know, like... Um, you know, Eisenhower, Obama, um, Herbert Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, real names were Hoover, you know, 
I guess this is where it started. Yeah. So they, there's the Swissy, who murdered the um, American president. So this is from the website here. I'll let you read it yourself and just do a quickie here. You know. So a list of people from Swiss concert. You know. Here's art and literature, Frank Ackermann, economist. Well, remember, you know, the Swiss Ackermann, who is from the, uh, from the town of Wallenstadt, uh, where, the, um, where the seven hills and the seven kings are in Switzerland, the Sieben Kurfürsten. He is the bank of the, um, he is the director of the, um, of the German bank, the Deutsche Bank. A very important, influential guy. Uh, I forgot his first name, but his name is also Ackermann. So, typical Swiss name, probably. Annenberg, yeah. And the rest. So, well, you can here you got Hamilton, you know, the Duke of Hamilton, where Rudolf Hess flew to um, in England. So you can read it yourself. Yeah. And did you know that the role of Lucifer? In the 1968 Polanski film, Rosemary's Baby was played by Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanist Church. And a year later, Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was satanically murdered by the Manson gang called The Family. And as Polanski is living in Kstad, Switzerland, the common denominator in all this, again, is the Swiss beast, home of the devil, where it somehow always relates to. So here it says in the book, it's also known that Lave acted as technical consultant for Polanski's film Rosemary's Baby a story of modern-day Satanism in New York City, in which he also played the part of Satan. Wow, charming, isn't it? And at the end, they all went to Switzerland. Maybe it's not so much of a coincidence that Swiss con sin ends with the word sin. And a sin it is, indeed, to conspire against two innocent Americans by the names of Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. Therefore, we must stand together and take down the Swampler abomination and free these two innocent Americans. So here again, the prosecutor, Ken Kratz, smiling through his teeth, as you can see here. And here it says, Swiss con sin. So someone call their lawyers and send them this video for understanding. One of their lawyers is the great Texan lawyer, Kathleen Zellner. And here's her phone number. Some freedom-loving Americans should do this. Call her up and send her this video. Here you can see Kathleen Zellner. I'll show you the phone number. So here it is from her website, how to contact her. Um, here are some emails. I can't use my email at the moment for security reasons. And I can't call up either because I'm far away. And uh, my phone credit won't uh, let me do this. So here again, another email of hers. And here's uh, th two phone numbers and a fax. So please, some freedom-loving Americans, send her this video and tell her about it. 
so we can stand up all together. And in fact, in this affair, the body of the mysterious victim, Theresa Halbach, was never found. Halbach is most likely living under another identity in the G-town Kstadt or Davos in Switzerland, where all members of the Halbach nobility of von Bohlen und Halbach went to the noble boarding school Lyceum Alpinum Tuot near Davos, and for the elite only. We all know how members of Pharaoh's elite nobility just disappear and change names and identities. And it always boils down to Switzerland, their base of Pharaoh, who have their colonies all over the globe, like Swiss Consum, where they grab the various key positions, like justice, department, police, politics, army, secret service, etc. So here is the girl whose body they never found, so they can't possibly, you know, condemn or sentence these two guys for murder if there's no body, you know. Uh, her name, Teresa Halbach, Swiss, you know, and in Swiss consent. And here is Stephen Avery, and here it says Brendan Desi, who is his nephew. So, you know, the minute I heard the name Teresa Halbach of that woman that disappeared and two young Americans are sitting in prison for that, you know, it rang a bell, you know. Here it says, Halbach. Harald von Bohlen und Halbach. And actually, their real name here it says, oh, I'm sorry, it's only in German here, but I'll find you some more in English. Here it says, um, Er verbrachte seine Jugend auf der von seinem Urgroßvater. So his great-grandfather was the industrial Alfred Krupp. So the real name of this Halbach family, and probably Teresa Halbach as well, and I find it real funny, you know, that her family don't even want to know what really happened to her, you know, if there really is a killer, you know. It's very suspicious, you know. So, and uh, in this respect, the, the, you know, the Netflix documentary was really well done, you know. It really gives a feeling about, you know, the um, what's really happening in the American justice, you know. So the real name of this Halbach family is actually Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Short Krupp. As I told you, nobility in the New Age, they just take one part of their real name, like Halbach or just Krupp. You know, and he went to this uh, school in Switzerland. Schweiz here is Switzerland. And the name is Lyceum Alpinum Tuot. It's a really funny name, you know. So, and uh, oh, here it is the um, a portrait of the family Gustav Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Hey, Teresa Halbach, yeah. And um, Harald is the fourth from the left. So, this one here is Harald, this one here. Yeah. So, it's a family portrait of the of the family Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. You know, that, that's the real Halbach name or the real Krupp name. They're hiding, as I told you. Look at all these old paintings. You know, this is the this is Pharaoh's nobility. And it gets worse, people. It gets worse, I tell you. So well you can those who speak uh, German, I didn't even read the whole thing, you know, they can uh, read it, and wasn't there an English translation? No, there wasn't, so, 
I could actually do a whole video about the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach family or dynasty. But this video is not about this. This video is about uh, two innocent Americans. So I just keep it short. Eh? And uh, here it says here Lex Krupp. There's a lot of interesting thing. Was a document signed into uh, by Adolf Hitler. Uh, personal company, etc. Yeah, Adolf Hitler. So Krupp, the Krupp factory was the uh, the German steel factory of the and weapons manufacturer factory of First World War and the Second World War. He was convicted uh, uh, for crimes against humanity. Yeah. But he probably never did it a day in, in prison. Eh? Only innocent Americans go to prison. These guys will never go to prison. Here you see him during the uh, Nuremberg trials. And uh, so this is the Halbach family. And uh, I'm sure I could find a lot more. Uh, you know, there's a Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach Foundation. It's a very powerful family. Eh? And of course, they're also in Swiss Wisconsin, eh? as they went to these uh, Swiss uh, schools, which I'm going to show you as well. Some interesting facts. So here, that's um, Wikipedia website about the Lyceum Alpinum Tuots funny name eh? in switzerland it's near here near st moritz another one of these uh, elite towns next to davos and start about and geneva of course but uh, in the mountains there are like three very well-known elite towns st moritz uh, davos and start You'll hear a lot of Russian being spoken here by the uh, oligarchs, you know, financing the wars and the death of Ukrainians. Here it says in Switzerland, <laughs> clean Switzerland. Eh? So, yeah, well, I'll let you read it yourself here. And um, here they 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 got even they got counts. You know, it's for the elite, it's for Pharaoh's nobility. All these Swiss boarding schools, it's for Pharaoh's uh, nobility. You know, the, why are they all in Switzerland? You know, like uh, Institut Le Rosy, Collège Alpin International, Beau Soleil, they all have a coat of arms, you know. Um, let me show it like this, yeah. You know, they all have a coat of arms with with knights and all this. This one too. And Eglon College, College Institute of the Rosenberg. That means the Mountain of Roses. Probably has a meaning, eh? Well, roses is uh, usually you know it's uh, connected to the uh, Knights Templars, you know, because they are. They have a uh, red cross, you know. So, and these are the um, these are the most expensive schools in the entire world. How come everything, you know, the most expensive, the biggest banks, the biggest pharmaceutical country, everything is in this little tiny country, right? This one here is a count. Anton Wolfgang Graf von Faber Castell uh, yeah, is also the owner of a company. They all are owners of companies, you know, because uh, you are their slaves and Pharaoh's nobility, you know, everything belongs to them. Here's Ferdinand Piech uh, from uh, Volkswagen. He was the director, here it says, of Volkswagen. Anton Piech. Uh, son-in-law of Ferdinand Porsche, uh, you know, uh, Good Georg, uh, a German actor, uh, well-known, Chris von Rohr, 
nobility, von Rohr. Yeah, they're all well-known people. Right? So the Swiss boarding school, where the uh, where the Halbach or Krupp family or, or Krupp von Bohlen und uh, und Halbach family, you know, where they where they went to school. Yeah. So here again is that um, Halbach school where the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach where they went to Lyceum Alpinum Tuat. Here is their coat of arms. Well, it's not very clear. I'll show you another picture. And here you see the concept of three, and here's a king. And here it says something. So, I mean, the Halbach family, as so I wrote down here, Halbach family, question mark, are they here? I mean, it wouldn't be too far off, you know. There, there are too many connections. There, uh, it's a nobility, Halbach family, and there are so many people disappearing in Switzerland anyway, you know. Polanski disappeared in Switzerland, uh, the Sackler family of the Oxycontin, the, uh, the killer prince of Savoy, and all the Nazis like uh, Dr. Joseph Mengele, Klaus Barbie, uh, Eichmann. And then all of a sudden they pop up somewhere in a completely other place in the world like uh, Argentina or South America. But first they all disappear in Switzerland. Eh? So this really isn't too far off eh, to assume that uh, Teresa Halbach you know, might be in Switzerland um, as well because um, Swiss Consin is definitely a Swiss state in the United States of America. And the whole affair, you know, you can, if you, it's, it's, it's being all, it's a setup, you know, against two innocent Americans and all, everything leads to Switzerland. So here is a better picture of their logo and it says Mensana in Corpore Sano. It means a healthy mind and a healthy body. That's why they were, you know, playing hockey and, and everything there in this elite boarding school. Here's the concept of three. There are three trees who look like pyramids, you know, and the whole thing is like a pyramid set up. And here's a sort of a king, and it says SL. Well, SL is also always for the elite, you know. There's Saint Laurent, uh, they put it on a Mercedes SL, and a, a lot of more things. And uh, so, I just show you, there are even our counts in this school, and probably also princes, and uh, which they don't even announce, you know, on the list, you know. So, and here again, it says Halbach family with a question mark. As the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach, they went here to this school. And there are a lot of them, you know, they their names are just Krupp or just Halbach. Because in the new times, the nobility, you know, they're hiding amongst us, you know. It's a secret rule, you know, it's not open anymore, you know. We don't know really who's ruling us, you know. And um, for the new world order, horizontal rule of the republic, they do this, you know. So here it says, Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. And it is in Nuremberg, 1947. So here he is. Eh? And so the Halbach dynasty, it's a very powerful dynasty. And they are quite capable of... Um, I mean, they've always been doing, you know, crimes against humanity, you know, as in uh, Wisconsin as uh, during the second world war the first world war it was hitler's and the nazis and the, the um, and the emperor's um, metal factories krupp and they just say krupp you know or they just say halbach and um, the halbach family um, i suppose it is quite we might assume 
seeing the amount of lies and organization and, and um, conspiracy against two honest, uh, innocent Americans, you know, um, this Teresa Halbach, uh, we might just as well assume she is of that uh, very powerful Halbach global uh, dynasty. So here we see another one of the Halbach dynasty. This one is Gustav Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Uh, you see him together with Mr. Hitler. Uh, this is the financer um, of the Nazis who also completely disappeared. Might as well be in Switzerland or Wisconsin. He's got a Templar cross or a Swiss cross even on his uh, on his vest. As they all go to that uh, Swiss uh, boarding school for the elite. Eh? Very, the Halbach dynasty is a very powerful dynasty. So here it says Hitler in Krupp von Bohlen Halbach factory. Here's the Hitler. This is Goebbels and the financer. I forgot his name. And um, so this is the 88 cannon, I suppose. Yeah. The um, notorious 88 cannon, with which the Allies had a lot of problem. So, the um, it's the same as the uh, Mengele of Doctor Mengele, the Angel of Death. It's a very powerful dynasty. You know, they're in, they're, they're billionaires, incredibly rich, and they can you know they've got all the funds you know to make someone disappear, or even their own you know if they want to have another life. Just as the Halbach family, you know, this is an extremely powerful dynasty. <clears throat> and they can make someone disappear, even if even one of their own members of their own family, if they see an advantage in it, like uh, $36 million of the uh, compensatory damages. I mean, all crimes against humanity, it's always two parties in it, you know, Pharaoh's nobility and Switzerland, their base. And Krupp von Bohlen Halbach, it's, uh, it's a very um, aristocratic uh, name. Actually, it's Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Nowadays, most of Pharaoh's nobility have left out the most parts of their long names, like Krupp, von Bohlen und Halbach, and just call themselves Halbach, like Teresa Halbach, who just disappeared and most likely never got murdered. Just follow the occult symbols of which I will show you some more, and the money trail leading to Switzerland. So, yeah, I changed it here. Hitler in Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach factory. And, you know, everything belongs to Pharaoh's nobility. And they got all their money in Swiss Nazi banks in the base, in Pharaoh's base. The Swiss bees, the home of the devil. And they just, since the, uh, the Knights Templars, or their Knights Templars, made the Republican system, um, there's just a new slavery system, a new feudal system of auto-sufficiency or self-sustainability. You know, you get an amount of money every month and you just see it for yourself, you know, that you can, um, you can arrange everything and buy anything you need. And at the end of the month, you've got nothing left anyway. And at the end of your life, you've got nothing left. You know, it's a, um, that belongs to the New World Order system by the Knights Templars of uh, autosufficiency or self-sustainability. Nothing has changed, really. So then these guys here, they're all of the nobility, you know, of course they are. 
Ah, hier ist Krupp himself, I recognize him. Uh, Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. And um, nothing has changed, really. I mean, it's still Pharaoh's nobility ruling, and they are behind all the wars, eh? You're just a dumb slave. In Wisconsin, there are even towns called Swiss, which you can see here in Wikipedia. And Wisconsin has even places called Little Switzerland, as I showed you before, for the town New Glarus, as there already is the old Glarus in eastern Switzerland. So he can read about it. Yeah. And look, the town hall, they don't have an American town hall. It says here, they got a Swiss town hall. You know, there's Swissy law here. Just like what they did with uh, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. They got Swiss laws. You know. So here it says, the Swiss town hall. I believe it. You know. So. Yeah, the Swiss town hall. That's amazing, eh? I mean, it's written here, eh? the Swiss town hall, you know. Don't you think it's like a mistake? Or they say, no, 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 no. They, they probably say, no, no, that doesn't mean that. But everyone can see what it means, eh? They got Swiss laws here and not American laws, eh? In Swiss Wisconsin, <clears throat> town called Swiss. Okay. The capital city of Swiss Wisconsin is Madison, where there is the capital building of Swiss Wisconsin in the form of a Swiss cross, and even in the exact same color of the Swiss cross, namely white. It says, Madison, Swiss Wisconsin, the Swiss cross capital. See, it's a white Swiss cross. You know, one, two, three, four. It's so obvious. The Swiss Wisconsin capital cross building is directed in all wind directions north, east, west, and south, indicating the Swiss strategy of the Nazi Templars or Swemplers, that in the motherland, in the Alps, those who speak Swiss German infiltrate Germany to the north and do their wrong doings over there. And those who speak French infiltrate France to the west, and those who speak Italian infiltrate Italy to the south, and those who speak reto romanic infiltrate to the east. So here's the building, the capital with an O, in the capital with an A, Madison of uh, Wisconsin. And here is another picture of it. And here it says north, west, east, and south. And I mean, can anybody imagine, you know, like the French and the Germans, and on top of that, Italians, you know, like grouping together in the deep Middle Ages of 1291 and saying, oh, we love each other so much, let's make a country together. No. They still don't like each other very much, you know, even in Switzerland. Those who speak French and those who speak Italian, those who speak German. Well, they get, of course, better along than a real German, a real French and a real Italian. I mean, that's obvious, eh? So there must have been a, a power on top of that, over that, you know, that put these language groups together. And these were the Knights Templars of Pharaoh's nobility.
which I explain in my video series, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. I'm going to give you all the proofs of that. And in this Swiss Cross building is the Supreme Court of Swiss Consent, where the two innocent Americans were tried in their Supreme Court trial. Huh. Anyone here believes that the Swamplers of Swiss Consen left them a chance? So here is the Wikipedia page of the Swiss Consen Supreme Court. And where are they seated? Yeah, the Wisconsin Supreme Court sits in the main hearing room room in the east wing of the Wisconsin State Capitol, you know, the Swiss Cross building, right? In Madison. There's Madison, all the same. And here is the uh the courtroom. Or part of it. You see there's a lot of nobility here. These are not normal people, eh? Uh, marble. Oh, here's the sun hieroglyph. Yeah, how many pillars are there? One, two, three, four, eight. Octagon. Uh, the the pillars of the Republic. Octagon. You know, Knights no, Templars. And um, here is the seal. You know, with the all-seeing eye. Here once again, uh, an eye. And. Um, it shows the uh, scales. Well, I can't see it in this picture here. Maybe like this. It shows the... Uh, well, I can't see it. Well, here are the scales of uh, Ma'at, the pharaonic goddess, with the, uh, the 42 principalities, um, in which are also the Ten Commandments. You know. So... Um, yeah, location once more the Swiss Cross building in the state capital with an O and Madison here is the capital with an A I don't know why they did that eh? don't ask me um, here the, the chief justice Tiegler yeah. Another Swiss German name. There's this famous uh, Jean Ziegler who wrote about the Nazis in Switzerland. And then he became, he, he got a job for the United Nations in, uh, in Geneva. And then it was all done. Uh, so, uh, here, Roggenzack. Another Swiss German name. Oh, well, look at that. Eh? Okay. Get out of there, the Roggenzack. Roggen, it means rye. You know, the grain. And Zack, it means the bag. Uh, it's a bag of rye, hey? Eh? Oh. Oh, I better not say anything. Eh? Yeah, here, the page about the Attorney General of Wisconsin. So, who is sitting in the Wisconsin Supreme Court? Well, there's this guy here. He's the Attorney General of Wisconsin. And here's the logo, which is quite interesting. I'll show you a better picture in a minute. And always look at the signs, eh? And where is he? You know, look, the seat is in the Wisconsin state capital. There we go again, the Swiss Cross building in Madison, Swiss Consen. And so, on. so here are some former ones of these here. You can watch it yourself. The, the names are quite interesting, you know, like, um, where is he? You can always... You know, find like aristocratic uh, names because, of course, they're all from Pharaoh's nobility. Eh? There, there's no, there's no doubt. Uh, they have all the key positions. You know, so 
the Attorney General of Wisconsin in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. So let's look at the Attorney General of Wisconsin seated in the Swiss Cross Madison State Capitol and let's analyze his logo. So here it says a Wisconsin Department of Justice, the office of the Attorney General. And here is his building. This is where he is residing uh, with North, West, East, South. It is a Swiss cross. And here in the logo, on the left hand side, we see the hangman with a rope three buttons on his jacket and a square on his belt for the concept of three and four saying square and compass for all the initiated ones to the right we see the grave digger with a pickaxe four buttons and a circle on top of his hat for concepts of three and four, same thing. And where the circle stands for the compass and four for the four corners of a square. In the middle is a rat, that's us, and all innocent Americans tried in the Swiss cross, capital of Swiss consum, like Stephen Avery and Brandon Desi. In the middle, we see the belt of the Order of the Garter, about which I've told you all about in a former video of mine. And on the Garter, it says, E pluribus unum, meaning, out of many, one, which also Trump's Q represents the Garter. And it's WWG1WGA for where we go one, we go all, which is just another way of saying one for all, all for one, of the Nazi Templars and the Freemasons. So here, the cue of Trump, it is the garter, which we just saw in the logo of the Eternal Attorney General in the capital Swiss Cross building in Madison, Wisconsin. It says, where we go one, we go all. You know, you know Trump is not representing the, uh, the workers class people, you know. So I don't understand it, I don't get it. How come he's so popular under the American workers, under the ordinary man? Because he's not one of you. And here in the motherland of this all, it says on the ceiling of the parliament, it says unus pro omnibus omnes pro uno, which means all for one and one for all. Or one for all and all for one. And here in the Swiss cross, you see the same round thing as in the capital in Madison, Wisconsin, where there's this round thing in the middle, you know. And I think these are in it as well. So it's everything is in it, you know. And this is the system of the uh, the new system of the uh, the Knights Templars, also Pharaoh's aristocracy, who made a new system that in, instead of only one king ruling, you know, which was the vertical rule or the old world order, they have they made the new world order and the republic where there is tens of thousands, if not hundred thousand. Aristocrats or pharaohs nobility ruling the country, and this is why we have to, they have to say things like uh, one for all and all for one, because it's a horizontal rule. You know, they're all at the same level, sort of, or where we go one, we go all. They're all brothers now. That's why they're all fraternities. You know, so this is the garter. You know, they put it around their legs. I, we just saw it in the logo of the Attorney General. So, any anybody wants to know who's ruling there? Hmm? So, I'll show it one more time to you in a better picture. Here's the rat, that's you. Here's the hangman. Here's the grave digger. 
uh, with this round thing on his uh, on his head and sort of a, a, a drop of whatever. Uh, he got four buttons. This one got three buttons and a square, so it says three and four. And um, here's the order of the garter, where it says pluribus unus, meaning out of many, one, which is the same as where we go one, we go all, or unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno, one for all and all for one. And now look at this pyramid. So here, in this pharaonic pyramid, there are nine inversed pyramids of death, standing for the nine gods of Egypt, called the Great Enead. And there were also nine original Templars. The condemnation of these two innocent Americans is part of a bigger occult ritual and maybe even satanic, as all the occult symbols are there. It's probably all connected to the seven hills and the seven kings in Switzerland, what I explained in this video here, on my other channel, Homeland Security. And the title is Helvetic Horror Heidi. So it is about the, the seven end time hills in Switzerland. So here's the coat of arms of the Windsors with the unicorn and the lion. And here we see the garter again, the belt. Just as we just saw, this is a symbol, it even says Oni Swaki Mali Pans, uh, which is a symbol of the Order of the Garter, which we just saw in the, um, the Swiss Cross capital of the Attorney General in Madison, Wisconsin. You know, the very same thing, the same belt, you know, which they put around their leg, you know, it's really perverted. Huh? It's a fraternity. You know, what else they do? They probably, um, I mean, I wouldn't do that with a brother, you know, if I had a brother, like, you know. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, who's ruling in the uh, in the capital in Madison, Swiss Wisconsin, eh? Who's ruling? Eh? Americans, eh? Well, it's more sort of like uh, make America great Britain again. So, this is the title here, it says, The Order of the Garter, on the same channel as this video here. And, well, check it out yourselves. I already told you that the Swissies always go for all the key positions in society, especially the ones within the authorities like the Swiss American presidents Herbert Hoover, the real name Hoover, Eisenhower, and Obama, Swiss American head of the CIA Alan Dulles, Swiss American FBI director J. Edgar Hoover, real name Hoover, Swiss American Watergate's Bob Haldeman, etc etc which i've already proven you in my other videos telling you this since 13 years so here it says deep state in washington deep swissy deep swampler so guys you better not do any speeding with your pickup in Madison, Swiss Wisconsin. If you don't want to end up in the Swiss Cross building with a lifer and a garter tied around your neck. And here you see the round thing and this is the other round thing which I just showed you in the Swiss Parliament. It's exactly the same.
So here you can see the comparison. This is on the Swiss ceiling of the Swiss Parliament, Unus pro omnibus omnes pro uno. And here you got these circles, you know, five. Well, this one in the middle is the this circle, if you look at it from the top, from the capital. And here the other four, only they're not like here on the uh, on on this here, but they are like here. But it's the same thing. And you know why? Because this thing here has a lot of squares in it, and this one here too for the square. So it needs also a circle for the compass. So it says square and compass. So you got a lot of squares here in the capital and a lot of compasses. If you look at it from the uh, from the top, exactly the same thing as in the motherland, Switzerland, and in Swiss Wisconsin. Right, you need any more proofs? And this is just the tip of the alpine iceberg, as 90% of an iceberg is invisible and underwater, just as the Stephen Avery, Brandon Dassey case. And this alpine Swiss iceberg has led to many major shipwrecks throughout history, like two world wars with the third coming up, if you don't mind me calling a world war an alpine shipwreck by the Swamplers.